Welcome to Start With A Win, where we give you the tools and lessons you need to create business and personal success. Are you ready? Let's do this. Coming to you from Brand Viva Media Studios here. Start with hey. a win. <laughs> Adam Canto is here on the microphone That's with right. producer Mark. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. I love it. Yeah. It's, um, you know, summertime is always great in the sense of there's lots of fun stuff to do. And uh, there's just, you know, for us, we, we do a lot of family stuff, you know. Yeah. Camping, road trips. It's yeah, great. You, you guys go and just kind of live off the earth, don't you? <laughs> I got a nice rig. You've seen my my, yeah. my my SUV that's all rigged out. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like the Overlander Lexus. E- exactly, SUV. <laughs> you and can go anywhere. That's right. I love it. So that's awesome. Well, <laughs> speaking uh, of car guys, hey, I'm I'm excited <laughs> about You're today. A car guy. <laughs> yeah, t- transportation. That's right. I mean, I'm 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 a car guy. I yeah. like to go camping. I'm headed up this weekend. Okay, so. good for you. Nice. And then so today we got uh, Brendan Keegan. Uh, on the show. So uh, Brendan is the CEO of Mer- uh, of Merchants, a company that provides customized fleet management and fleet uh, leasing solutions to a wide range of businesses. He is an award-winning six-time president and chief executive officer, leading companies ranging from 500 to 10,000 employees. So I, I know that we're going to be able to gain a lot of great leadership uh, information and ideas uh, from Brendan. Welcome to Start With A Win. Welcome, Brendan. All right, thanks, guys. I, uh, I I love hearing about your your trips this summer, and I'd love to check out your rig, uh, Mark, sometime. Okay, yeah, You'll yeah. Have I have, I have the uh, LX uh, Lexus LX G uh, uh, GX uh, four sixty, but it looks like it's oh, got a, it's very, a. He's got stuff hanging. I all got over awnings, it. and I got you know roof <laughs> racks, and I got this Yakima trailer hitch oh, connector yeah. you know that can swing free and turn into a cutting board for cooking and all Whoa. sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a picnic awesome. here at Brand Viva here <laughs> on <later>. the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brandon, um, you know, it's so cool to have a, a CEO on, I, you know, the world I come from. And it's interesting because, um, you know, what happens in a CEO's head is really unique. And a lot of people love to, to get into that on a daily basis. When you hit the office, what do you start thinking about? I mean, take us through, what do you do every day as a CEO? And I mean, they've heard my perspective on it, but I want to hear yours. What's a CEO do in your world? Uh, what I actually do is I, I kind of start my work day at home. Yeah. And, and I say that in that, you know, I, I, after I get up, take care of the dogs uh, and feed them and such, I kind of really focus on, you know, any overnight emails, any communications. I kind of go through my day and, and I launch about an hour, hour and a half. No one bothers me in that time. So that hour and a half I get is the equivalent of three, four hours later in the day. And but once I hit the office, I view my day as the company's day. Oh. You know, very what very little time do I have to close my door and and do work that I have to do. Um, I try to do things like this, you know, uh, do podcasts, uh, be in team meetings. And when I do have some free moments, instead of oftentimes me working on things that I have to work on, you know, I'll spend time just walking around the office. Uh, but you know, one thing that, that, that I focus on as a CEO and as I've had a chance to grow in, in, in my CEO ship throughout my career, if you will, what I realized, uh, probably in my third CEO role is you can't do everything. You know, early on, I tried to keep my, my finger on all aspects of the role and where I really spend my time now is, you know, our vision, you know, is our vision live and well, the values of the company, you know, are we living those values? So. One of our values is innovation. Well, are, are we really innovating? And if we aren't, then we aren't honoring that value. Uh, the third one is is people. And I got to tell you, there's, there's been no uh, better time or tougher time to manage your people than right now. I say better time because I think the hybrid world has opened up tremendous opportunities. For us, it's opened up talent pools that we probably pre-COVID wouldn't have tapped into, but challenging because it, it's challenging. You know, there's the labor shortage. Uh, culture is the fourth thing that I focus on is are we driving the right culture? And then uh, the fifth, and it it kind of is how you take your vision values and turn them actionable is goals. Uh, do you have goals in place on an annual basis, on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, daily basis? And I'm a big daily basis goal guy. 
Because if you're not doing these, these things daily, if they have, if they don't become habits, you're probably not going to have them hit at the end of the quarter, end of the year. You talked a, a fair amount of things that really, really uh, hit home with me. I, and, you know, I mentioned the, the goals and habits and things like that. But um, let's go to values first. And, you know, the organizations that are strong uh, and continue to, to strengthen themselves are values-driven organizations. Yet, you know that that's, you know, you walk down the hall, that's not the first thing on the employee's mind, but we want it to be the first thing on the employee's mind because that's that's our north star in in this you know business environment is you know we have to live to our values and that drives how we function how do you keep values top of mind in your business and with your employees i mean is it something you talk about a lot or do you communicate a lot about it what what do you do with that i would say you you have to make it part of your everyday uh, company so okay. you know do we measure it yes it's in our performance reviews but that's probably not the best thing in, in the sense that that's an annual event or in our case, semi-annual. Um, so someone's going to think about it, but how do you bring it in? So I'll give you some examples. We have, uh, you know, we do lots of very large fleet leasing deals. We'll have a credit committee and one of our values is flexibility. So somebody will come in and they'll be pitching how we should be doing the deal. And, you know, credit, although some people think credit's there to say no, our view is credit's there to say yes, but, you know, yes, but this, yes, but this. And, and my job in there, really, because I'm the tie-breaking vote, and ultimately, I like when I don't have to vote, my job in there is to honor our values and make sure we're being flexible. You know, Don't let the power swing to credit where they start to become rigid, where they say, oh, no, we can't do that. And I can tell you from you know being at different companies when I've gone in, oftentimes, the company never intended for their credit committees to say no. But over time, they became less flexible and more rigid, usually as a company grew. So with flexibility, which is one of our goals, then when we're in that credit committee, we have to honor that goal by being flexible. Um, also, when a client calls and, and says, hey, I'm having trouble paying this month, or they called during COVID and we had certain businesses shut down, we have to say, hey, it's our job to be flexible. Now, flexibility during COVID was something totally different than flexibility pre-COVID, but you you have to to redefine what flexibility meant. So it's got to be something that you talk about every day. Um, now, we also have a few values that hopefully we don't actually have to talk about, one of them being integrity. Um, hopefully, integrity is one that you're not often talking about out loud. It's just something that happens. You're hiring to that or firing to that. But service flexibility innovation are three that on any given day, you can probably hear in almost any meeting that we're in. Let's get into putting these goals into creating results that, that lead us towards these goals. And you've mentioned a couple of words. One is habits and one is actions. And um, tell me how those fit into the goals and how do we translate that into actually at the end of the quarter or, or month or what, however you measure that, we look at it and go, mm, we did the right thing. So there's when you think of goals, there's uh, what's called leading indicators and lagging indicators. Right. Um, I think companies get fascinated by lagging indicators. Lagging indicators really are all financial metrics. Right. So you know it's it's July seventh, and I had the chairman of our board ask me earlier today, "Hey, how how do we do this month?" I said, "I haven't got the financial numbers yet, but we beat forecast." He goes, "How how do you know we beat forecast?" I go, "Because I look at leading indicators." And, and we have nine that we track on a daily basis every day. Um, it's, geez, the distribution list must be over 100 people. Uh, we get the stats on, on nine indicators and we have what's our plan, what's our forecast, and how did we do? Keep in mind, beginning of the year, you have a plan. Now, right. During the year, that plan changes. So go back to 2020, COVID changed. Oh, yeah. Uh, right now, <laughs> supply chain, getting vehicles in our business, but I think supply chain in any business changes. So we measure it against our plan and then against our forecast. And on every morning, I can in literally five seconds, 10 seconds, get a pretty good pulse on how did the company do yesterday and how are we doing overall? Uh, now, what I'll tell you that, that just lets me know, do we need to do any corrective actions? Because too many times uh, it's it's July 7th, it's July 8th, and all of a sudden the numbers come in and you knew where you wanted or you aren't where you wanted. And by that time, you're you're too late to do anything about it. You're already a third of the way through the next month. Right. Um, so it also allows us to be more decisive. So 
the first starts with uh, what, what we talk about is leading indicators versus lagging indicators. And that if you do these things, then you know that the, out, the financial outcome is going to get there. Uh, the second is we ask the owners of each of those, what do you need to do on a daily basis to drive that given metric? So that metric might be orders, the metric might be deliveries, the metric might be utilization. So if utilization dips, then somebody knows we should sell off some of our assets or not um, uh, bring in any new assets because our utilization dipped. So people really on a daily basis know, what do I have to do? And when you can get your employees to understand on a daily basis how they can impact leading indicators, if you're able to do that, I, I'm willing to bet you're going to hit your monthly, quarterly, and annual numbers for perpetuity. That's a great plan. I mean, it, it you're not you're being proactive here, so you're thinking ahead of the game. How do you know that you're getting people to do the things that they need to do, and how do you inspire them to do so as the leader of the company? As a leader in a company, or a leader in your community, or a leader anywhere. If you want to be successful at this, you have to get it where the person knows they're being successful, not you telling them. Right. And then what I've found in, in my career and in my personal life, most people, if not all people, want to be successful. A lot of people don't know how to be successful or they don't know when they are being successful. When, when you can internalize that a person can get up in the morning, take a look at these indicators, take a look at what their role is, and they know. I was successful today. I wasn't successful today. At that point, as a leader, your job's much easier, right. much, much easier. I don't have to run around the building and start either cheering for people or barking at people. People show up at the office and they know at 901, hey, how did we do? What do I, what do I have to do to be better today? So I think as a leader, and it's why you didn't hear me say what my job is. I didn't talk about financial metrics. I didn't talk about managing the board. I didn't talk about building partnerships. I talked about, you know, are we honoring our vision and values? Do we have the right people? Do we have the right culture? And do we, are we, do we have goals in place? If we do that, everything else is going to take care of itself. And here, the last thing I'll tell you is it's unbelievably contagious. So when someone starts to see themselves winning, it's addictive. They, they want to win tomorrow. They want to win the next day. And then on somebody on their team sees their peer winning, everyone wants to be on a winning team. Everybody does. You know, a yeah, sports analogy, you know, sometimes we've seen this team that's great and they start losing and all of a sudden the players and coaches are going at it. Okay. Right. They win their next three, four games and guess what? Harmony, harmony. So, you know, there's something to be said for when you're winning. It, it's a good feeling. It, it does truly bring better teamwork, better collaboration. But my role as CEO isn't to be out there letting people know when they're winning or not. It's creating a culture that people are accountable to themselves and know when they're winning and when they're not. And I, and I think that's what uh, a big part of my role as, as a leader is. Brendan, this has been amazing. And I encourage everybody to, to go back. There are tons of great leadership nuggets in this podcast here. I have a question for you, and I asked you how you start your day with a win at the beginning of this, which I usually save at the end, but I wanted to spin that here for this audience coming from a multi-time CEO, a great leader of many, many people. Brendan, if you were to give some advice to our listeners of how they can start their day with a win, if they're getting up wondering, how, what should I do? What advice do you have for them? Uh, my advice would be have a morning routine. And in your morning routine, be, be very, very, very disciplined by it. And in the morning, I get up and I have five things I do every morning. The first thing is I look at my sleep score. How did I do? The, the next thing is I set up my day. I, say, I, I write out what do I want to accomplish for the day. And by the way, I, only, I limit it to five things, not 10, not 15. Because by the way, if I put 10 down, I'm just, I'm just lying to myself. The third is, is I read for 15 minutes. That was very hard for me very hard because I wanted to go. I'm like, the day's going, the day's going. What I've found though, is it grounds me mentally. So that, that was probably 10 years ago, about five years ago, I, I, I entered in and this one, I'm still a work in progress is I try to meditate five to 10 minutes a day. Notice I didn't say 10, 20 or 30. And then, then, um, I, I do my morning workout. Cause I know if I say I'm going to do it at the end of the day, something comes up. 
that's my morning routine. Um, and what I'd say is uh, just stay focused on that. Totally. Awesome. Brendan Keegan, CEO of Merchants, uh, a great leader. Thank you so much for being on Start With a Win and sharing this leadership wisdom. All right. It was great being with you, Adam. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Start With a Win. If you'd enjoyed this content, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and head over to adamcontos.com slash leadership where you can get um, a PDF download that will give you three keys to be a better leader. And uh, don't forget about the Start With a Win book. You can get that online anywhere we you order your books. And uh, until next time, remember, start with a win. That was that was some great leadership. That was so good. So welcome right. to the show after the show. This is the yeah, uh, thank you the YouTube the YouTube uh, part where we give people who watch the video a little uh, you know a little treat of extra content. And one question I had for you is: You've yeah. obviously uh, been the CEO, the president of many companies. Uh, was there a moment where you you had that set like that goal set like? Were you like an MBA student and you're like, you know, I want to like run a company someday or how did you get there? And then did you just fall in love with that leadership and that role and just continue to find jobs um, throughout your career? Yeah. So uh, for, for me, I knew at a young age um, that I enjoyed leadership. Matter of fact, I, I know my, I, I talk about leadership moments. I kind of know my moment it was third grade. I was trying, I was going out for football and it was August 1st and, uh, rural New Hampshire. And we were all in a circle, Coach Buchanan, um, who would probably be in the back of a cop car if he were coaching today. Um, <laughs> said, hey, I need somebody in the middle leading calisthenics. I jumped in the middle and I just loved the feeling of it. Mm. I love the feeling of it. And, and I, it wasn't the power that I liked. I still remember like then when we ran a lap and I, I finished up at the beginning of the pack, I loved running back and helping the kid that was struggling. And I, and I, and this sounds weird, but like I enjoyed filling the water jugs. Huh. I enjoyed making sure we had football. So it really was that when I said, you know, and by the way, if you had said, hey, so you've got bit by the leadership bug, I would have said, what's leadership? Hmm. I just like being the guy in the middle of the circle right. at that point. And then, um, and then through high school, uh, I think one of, you, one of the things we had talked about is setting goals. I had set a goal. I said, hey, I'd like to be president of our high school freshman incoming class. And, and I put some effort into it and got it. And then that just turned into sophomore year, junior year. And I, and then as I did that, I said, you know, I'd really like to run a cup someday. Hmm. And, um, and so it's kind of always been on my mind. And what I'll tell you, though, is it probably took having really good mentors that when the chance came to push me to do it, because I wasn't hmm. sure I was ready. Right. You know, I, I, I've always tried to be self-aware. And I say try because we could always be more aware <laughs> about right. ourselves than we are. But I remember when the first opportunity came up, I'm like, I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'm ready. And my mentor said, you are. You were built for this. Now, mm. I would say I'd give myself a C minus, you know, uh, B minus C plus on my first role, but you know, that's part of being a first time CEO. So, you know, I, I think I, I always enjoyed leadership. And then as I got to go in my career, I said, yeah, I'd really like to lead a company someday. I love that. All right. Hey, thanks so much for, for, for being on start with a win. And thank you for watching the podcast on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that thumbs up icon. If you thought this was good content and valuable, it helps the algorithm promote it to, to more people. And uh, if you want to get notified every single time we release a new episode, which is Wednesdays and quick wins every other Friday, hit that bell icon and you'll get notified. And until next time, remember, start with a win. Start with a win.